One of the um, great things of our job, the perks of our job, is that we get to watch the film over and over and over again. And we get to see the funny things that the animators do with these background characters. And so, you know, in this scene, there's all of these characters, and you have your main character, Mike, walking down. But then the animators would get very inspired um, and, and come up with these little gags. So at the end of the shot here, if you look closely, there's a hacky sack game going on. And um, the animators took advantage of the body types that we designed. And then the guy, the slug, can't play very well. So it's, <laughs> it's this funny thing that, that happens. And there's stuff sprinkled all there over is. the movie like that on the film too, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is, in 2008, we did a brainstorming session, and that was like one of the first drawings I did. And wow. somehow it was just stuck around through the whole production. It's a great drawing. Um, so traditionally, when we design characters, right, we spend a lot of time on paper figuring out exactly what they're going to look like. And then we work with a sculptor, and we sculpt it in 3D. And then we spend you know, weeks and weeks trying out painting different textures on the character before we even begin the modeling process. But after looking at the boards and knowing that we had more than 300 background characters we needed to build, that we knew that wouldn't work because we, we don't have 15 years to make the movie. So our supervising technical director, uh, Sanjay Bakshi, came up with this idea that, oh, maybe we build these um, rather basic body types like you see on the upper left corner there and then build in controls that can like, make them fatter, heavier, lengthen their limbs, move their eyes around, move their mouths up and down. And then have the art department provide, like you see here, a th basic thumbnail, really rough, just like suggestions of ways to go. Um, and then we'll give those models to the animation team and let them try to, you know, this is an example of one character and all the different ranges of body shaping you could get out of it. Um, so we, by doing that, leverage the happy accidents that come from, you know, maybe certain things work better together. So we had each, this is just from one body type. We have the animation run wild with our suggestions from art, as well as we encourage them to make up some of their own. And then we did a, a process of attrition, and we'd come through and go, OK, you know, pick the ones that fit into our monster's world and you know, get rid of the ones like you know, the flying one at the top. His arms, his hands look like they're going to break off. So it wasn't going to be functional for our film. Um, and then we uh, added another layer with designing these accoutrements, like horns and wings and things that would break up their silhouette. because. At least initially, we thought these characters would be seen at a long distance. So anything that broke up their silhouette would be helpful. Unfortunately, they all ended up being seen full screen. But um, so here's an example of this is one body type. And this is all the different kind of monsters we got out of that. And the big win here is you also gain all of your facial rigging and acting controls. Um, and here's a walk set. You also, so if you animate one walk cycle with a little bit of adjustment for leg length, you you get all of them walking. So not only can we get variation of uh, shape and size and things like that, we can get variations from the uh, uh, shading, the, the, the surface quality. So we can get different colors, you know, and that gets variation. And um, uh, surface texture, like f adding fur or skin and things like that. So. Um, here, this is just that one body type. It's called a fungus body type. So if you look down the row, it, you can get um, uh, five different uh, uh, variations based upon color, adding the spikes and the horns and the wings and adding fur. And so from there, you know, the nine original variations, we can get 45 monsters or so. And then from uh, one body type, or we have up to six body types. We have the thing called fungus body type, pill, spiff, slug, charlie, and block. And the reason why we named those is on Monsters Incorporated, there were these unique body our characters. And uh, we're like, oh, what's the name of that character? So one was named Spiff, another one was named Charlie. You know, This was a, uh, an assistant guy on Monsters Incorporated. And so, um, but the other ones, like a pill, we just, they look like a pill shape. So we just used that. And then a block. This is just a bigger block. And then, a, of course, a slug. Um, there's also a thing called one-offs um, over here. Do you want to talk about one-offs, Jay? Sure. So our concern with going this kind of more sim simple road, 
root initially was that you know we're ending up with a lot of bipedal characters, and the first movie had some a lot of really distinctive body types and therefore animation and movement. So we wanted to make sure we peppered in some, you know, like guys. It's just a, a tentacle on the ground or tentacle-based ice dock characters, just to make sure it really felt like the first film. We have to be careful that these background characters don't steal too much attention from the main characters, because that's the kind of thing where you, you can make some really cool things, but if it's drawing the eye in a negative way, we have to be careful not to cast them around the, uh, the main characters. So um, over, all in all, we created 300, almost 300 new background characters for the movie, and uh, there's almost 500 monsters in Monsters University, including the main characters. And what's, not, what's interesting is that I've learned that we have to name each one of these characters for the database to keep it organized. And so we're like, oh no, what are we going to do? So what was nice about this film is that we, got, we named these characters after everyone on the crew. Mm -hmm. So everyone got to become a background character. So these are the, that's Jason and myself. Nice. And uh, Jason yeah. used to have spiky hair. I'm the one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they named them all. They started off first trying to figure out ones that look like people. and then. Another cool thing about Monsters University is we have more female monsters represented in this film. On Monsters Incorporated, we only had a few, like Roz and Celia. And um, uh, for this one, um, you know, we have uh, Dean Hardscrabble, which is one of my favorite film characters in the movie. Um, at one point, she was a male. And uh, it changed. One of the greatest things that could have happened was uh, the decision to make her into female, and she's a really strong character. We have so many cool characters, um, uh, monster girls. You have the sporty group and the goths, and the uh, the librarian is a really cool design. Uh, Claire, and of course Mrs. Squibbles, who steals the show. She's very happy that there's a lot more female monsters represented.